Today I will go through an uh, inline uh, demo and this is one of the use case which actually customer has deployed and uh, you can see that the same BF BMF controllers, big monitoring fabric controllers can manage both out of band and also in band switches. So in this case the firewall, the traffic which is coming uh, behind the firewall is still considered untrusted as such that they have to go to the advanced security appliances before going to the core switches. And the advanced uh, services are like IPS or DDoS uh, appliances. <clears throat> we'll just show you in this uh, demo that how easy it is to create a chain and how easy it is to insert these services in the chain. And optionally, you can also send a copy of the production traffic to an out-of-band switch which can also take to multiple of these tools. In case like you want to send a copy to like five security appliances. So you can simply use the inline switch as an active tap and send a copy of the production traffic to an out-of-band switch. Okay. So to clarify, does, does that imply that the switch either runs in inline or the traditional mode, one yes. or the other? Okay. <clears throat> either you can have a switch in an inline mode or out of band mode. And then you can have a passive tool like IDS or any other tools to monitor the out of band uh, traffic. So can the inline switch duplicate? I suppose there wouldn't be a use case there. Never mind. Okay. And one of the questions which pops up a lot is what happens if the controllers are not available for some reason. Maybe a WAN link failure and now the controllers are not available and this was a remote site. So it actually happened with the customer doing the production pilot with us and he, he told me an interesting story that uh, uh, he was trying to log into the controllers. The controllers were part of the VM cluster and for some reason the VM admin has deleted those controller VMs. But, the, but he didn't see it on the network as such. Because whatever the policies have been pushed, they will stay there until you basically the switch is rebooted or you need to do any changes, then you will only go and see the controller. Just curious, is this the same version that's online for the on-demand labs? Yes. It is. And the, the last part of our talk, if we have time, we'll actually previous of this, do some previews on the on-demand labs. Cool. So you can see we have few of these outer band switches and there is one inline switch. Here you have a graphical view of the entire switch from Ethernet 1 to Ethernet 48 and uh, you can do a drag and drop and create a chain. Let's go ahead and quickly. So let's say this is one point which is coming directly from the firewall, is on Ethernet 11, and then the, the other connection which is going to the core switch is on Ethernet 12. I can simply drag and connect. And now your basic chain is now built, but you haven't inserted any services. Now for me to insert services, I can simply First, I need to connect the services to the switch. So if you look at here, I have SSL appliance. I can go ahead and build a service. I can either select the interfaces right from here, or I can just create one service and then do drag and drop here as well. Go back to the chain, insert service. Once, submit. So first I build a chain and then I have inserted a service in the chain. And this service is right now 
required, but I can always go ahead and say if I want to have service as optional or I can have it required, which means whether I want to do fail open or fail close based on my health check. Do you have a limit to the number of services that you can chain? So today we can chain up to four services. And those four services can be shared across multiple chains. Four services per chain? Yes, four services per chain. So you can have different, different services for different chains as well. Okay. And the last thing is on the span. I can also create a span, which is <coughs> which is essentially taking a copy of one way of the traffic and sending it to my span port. And then the span port is what either I can uh, connect a tool directly to that span port, which will be just a, taking a copy of the traffic, or I can send it to an auto band switch and then I have much more capabilities available, whether I want to make five copies or 10 copies of the same uh, traffic and send it to different tools for analysis. So you, you can do a span on inline, which is you, you can only really do one. So it's in your best yes. interest to send it to an out-of-band switch so you can do all the other. Exactly. Okay. All right. So I, I can do one span, one copy can be sent okay. out, but yeah. Yeah. And then also all those analytics which I was getting, mm -hmm. those analytics I'm getting through an auto band switch. Yeah. So you, you not only can create copies, you can also look into the traffic and give you that statistical dashboard mm -hmm. and uh, have all that information. Do you foresee some of the monitoring stuff we talked about earlier that you said is scripted currently moving into the GUI? Is that roadmap kind of stuff? Like for the latency tracking for tool ports and that kind of thing? So that would be a custom script that you would write, right? Um, you know, actually, if there are certain vendors that, that you were interested in, in um, doing that for, you know, let us know because it, it's we always appreciate understanding who people are using our stuff with. Uh, and then it's a question of well, maybe we can start taking that information and pushing it into the GUI. But to be clear, it's not about a specific tool; it's just latency through the tool. Yes. Okay. So and that that is customized. We can go up to like 500 milliseconds and uh, and send the packets and see how the latency is. How the the service is behaving okay. across sending the packet across the appliance as such. Okay. And it looks Ooh. like you can span before and after the chaining. Yes. So if you don't have if you don't own the appliances that you're passing traffic through, you can still see the before and after. So this is essentially taking the traffic from one direction versus the other direction. So. It's bi-directional traffic, right? So when I turn on the span over here, I'm, I'm collecting the traffic from one side. Okay. Then <coughs> which is the return traffic which is coming, then I have to span on the other side as well and send the traffic to the same port or another port. So it's not, you can't control the direction of the traffic that it's grabbing when you span. You know what I'm saying? Do I make I'm, I'm basically collecting the traffic Spanning the traffic before sending it to the tools. Yeah, but not. Yeah, but the one on the bottom where there's no span service right now. Yes. If you were to put a span service there, is it going to span the traffic that's coming Southbound. in? Southbound. Yeah, okay. Which is coming in? Okay. Yeah. Right. Run that. Southbound, like southbound, would be after it comes from after the. Comes through the so you'd see the same traffic both sides of the tool, in one direction only. Can you get it going the other yes. direction? Yes. Yeah. Can you get it going both directions simultaneously? Yeah. Okay. Good start. Yes. Okay.